Okay, we are going to talk about 1.8 today, which is titled the derivative as a rate of change. And hopefully this will be short and sweet, but I've said that before I feel like. And sometimes it goes a lot longer than I think, but actually I'm just gonna do one example for you and that's it. Because I think you're gonna see, um, and just talk about a couple things I, I think you're going to see that this is a pretty simple example and we, or simple, simple section, maybe not simple is the right word, but um, you know, the, the really big deal with this section, as you've already read in the, in the section, is um, that the big ideas from this section, right, is that F primed of A, what does this do? This measures the rate of change, the instantaneous rate of change of f of x at x equals a. And this is something that, that hopefully you have kind of um, gathered through the last couple sections that the derivative gives us the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the tangent line is the slope of the curve and that really gives us the instantaneous rate of change of my function and then when I plug in a number it gives me the rate of change of that function at that value um, x equals a. So a couple things here that you should have got um, caught from, from this section. So obviously that the derivative is the rate of change. There's some stuff about velocity that we're not going to do. I'm just looking at the book here. Um, and then there's the small little, I don't think we're going to use this too much, but th they get this. So remember, Let me write this down really quick. So remember the, our discussion in 1.7 about marginal cost or marginal revenue? What marginal cost or marginal revenue did is if you let this H be one, then that gave you the, the estimated you know, cost it would be to increase by one unit. What this equation does, which is on page 116 of your book, is this just shows you a way to measure a small change in a function. One way you could do that is just evaluate the derivative of A and then multiply by whatever change you want to go from A. So, you know, if I want to know what happens to my function values as 1 goes to 1.1, what would be the difference of my function values? I could just take 0 0.1 times f primed of 1, and that gives me an approximate change. Instead of actually having to calculate this, like maybe our derivative, or excuse me, our function is quite complicated, and the derivative is a little more simple. Anyway, I want to do an example that talks about that and then talks about this idea of average rate of change. And that's all I'm going to do for you. And I think that um, I think that you can do the rest. So let's look at it. So the example I'd like to do for you today is let's um, consider the revenue function. Um, from selling, let's just say we're selling X car seats, okay, given by, so here's my function, my revenue function, again, that's the money that we collect, that's not our profit, that's just our revenue, let's say is 60X minus zero, 0.025 x squared, and then we have the, the I'm going to give you the domain on x here, okay? We can, x can sell between zero car seats or 2,400 car seats. Now, why that lock on 2,400? Well, that's basically the domain over which this revenue function makes sense. Possibly as we get more than 2,400, maybe this revenue function doesn't model that well after that, or maybe when you graph this function, um, you know, this is a parabola um, facing down. So my guess is like maybe the revenue goes like this, something like that. And so after 2,400, it wouldn't make sense to talk Talk about it because you would have a negative number down here, which doesn't make sense for revenue, right? Because revenue is the money that we take in. Why does it do that? Well, there's a, there's a sweet spot, right, where we hit our maximum revenue. So my question here is, A, find the average rate of change. Whoops, <laughs> I can spell. I'm a math teacher. We'll just leave it. Um. Uh, between or um, 
let's let's not say between. Let's say find the average rate of change when um, sales go from ten thousand to oh not ten thousand excuse me I want fifteen or ten uh, one thousand excuse me why well, doesn't ten thousand make sense because x can only go between zero and twenty four hundred so one thousand to one thousand fifty. Okay, so here's what average rate of change is. So average rate of change is basically if I looked at where my function was maybe at 1,000 and then I look at 1,050, what the average rate of change would give me is the slope of that line between those two. So how do I find slope? Well, slope is just your change in y over your change in x. So my average rate of change is going to equal my, my revenue, right, that I would get from 10,050 minus the revenue from 1,000. That is going to be the change in revenue. That's 1,000, okay? All divided by my change in actual car seats. So again, this is all average rate of changes. All average rate of changes is the slope of that secant line that would go between those two price points. And I don't know why I drew such a small example here where that would be 1,000 and that guy right there would be 1050K. So that's all that's asking for an average rate of change. So if we plug that in, uh, let me grab my calculator really quick. Of course, I don't have it right on me. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in 1050 .02, minus 0 0.025 times 1050 squared. Um, and I'm going to get something on the top here about 35, whoa. <laughs> Three five. I was not looking at the screen when I was doing that. Three five four three seven and fifty cents. Okay, so again, how did I get that number? I just plugged in ten fifty into this function. Minus now, let's put in one thousand. All I can I can just do second entry in my if I you have a graphing calculator and put that in, and that's just thirty five hundred. And then what is or excuse me, 35,000. And on the bottom, that's 50. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract that. I can do that even in my head. Look at that master's degree. And I can subtract that <laughs> divided by 50. And so what is my average rate of change? And what I want you to make sure you're able to do is I want you to be able to describe your average rate of change using units. Okay, so on the test or something, I'm going to say, you know, um, describe, you know, use units to describe this. So this is 108.7. So what does that mean? What is the, what is the numerator here? Remember, this is the revenue. So what do I know? This is money, right? And what do I know down here? This is the number of seats. Think about what happens. Seats sold. So X, what is my X? My X is the number of seats sold. What does it spit out the revenue? So this is $108.70 per seat sold. That's my average rate of change when I go from 1,000 to 1050. I hope that makes sense. So um, one last one last part of this problem and then we're, I promise I'm going to stop talking. That's going to be amazing. Uh, let me clear this really quick. Okay, so part B of this. Oh, I need my ink flow to be up. Part B. Okay, so part B is find the instantaneous. That looks wrong. Instantaneous. I think that's right. Uh, um, when, oh, excuse me, instantaneous rate of change. Not an average now. When 1,000 seats are sold. That's I know that's a sweet source. So it's the end of the day. So instantaneous rate of change of what of the revenue when a thousand seats are sold. So remember what our revenue function was. Our revenue function was sixty x minus zero point zero two five x squared. And what I want you to remember here is that anytime you see this instantaneous, okay. So in calculus, anytime you see instantaneous, that means derivative. Always, 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 always means derivative. So what this is asking you to do, instead of finding an average now between 1,000 and 1,050, what this wants to know is, no, what was the instantaneous rate of change of our revenue at that moment in time 
when, oh, let's not put that quite yet. <clears throat> At that moment in time when I sold a thousand car seats. Okay. Not when, not during the time between selling a thousand and selling a thousand and fifty, but from actually selling a thousand. So what I want need first is I need the derivative. So let's find the derivative. Remember that gives us our instantaneous rate of change. The derivative here is going to be 60 minus 0 0.05 x. That's just simply using the power rule, correct? I bring the two down and I multiply it. Hopefully I did that right. I should always check myself. I always mess up when I do decimals. I don't know why. That's right. Hey, go me. Um, and so then what do I want to do here? I, what am I going to plug in? I'm going to plug in the 1000. Okay, so r prime then of x equals 60 minus 0 0.05 times 1000. I think I can do that in my head. Move the decimal in place over 3 and I get 60 minus 50. So what does this tell me? This is just 10. So what is this saying? I am $10. So that is $10 per seat. That would be my instantaneous rate of change. And I want to make sure I'm right there. Good. So, so that's my instantaneous rate of change when at that moment in time when I'm selling 1,000 car seats. And I know that this looks a little bit different than what we had here. I'm going to make sure I did that correctly. I think I did. Um, um, it looks a little bit different here, but why does it look a little bit different here? Because we're not looking at exactly 1,000. If I had picked a number closer to 1,000, maybe I had picked 1,020 or 1,010 or 1,005, I would be getting closer to um, this $10 a seat that I got here. But again, this is the instantaneous rate of change. That's how quickly, and this is positive, so what that means is my revenue is increasing at 1,000. Could this number be negative? Absolutely. What that means is your revenue is decreasing at that moment in time. Okay, I told you this was going to be short. It's not really, but I'm under 15 minutes. I think that's pretty good. As always, email me or let me know if you have questions.